Hello, hello, GX community and YouTube followers. Hey, how are you guys doing? I have been gone for such a long time, three to four months to be exact. I've been away traveling all over the world. I've been going to Southeast Asia. I did uh, hit Mexico. I also ended up, I have no clue how, but I ended up in a very tiny little village population, maybe 50. And I think it's called Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's like totally off the grid. It's, uh, I bet you it's not even on your Google search. You type in Calgary, it's not even there. The Google will be like, huh? Yeah, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, I was over there. I've been going over there quite a lot. I did meet a special someone. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous. But you can find more of my content that is not related to the GX on my Instagram page at gx.bob. Okay, gx.bob, follow my Instagram page. So I'm finally back home and doing DIY projects for our Lexus SUVs. Okay, so we're going to attempt the next big thing that a lot of you guys have been requesting on my channel. And what is it? It's CarPlay. Since CarPlay is an electronic equipment, I kind of wanted to veer off any off-brand equipments and equipments made in China only because it's electronic and it's going to go into a car that I love. So if it fails on me, I have to rip everything apart uh, to replace it again. And you know how customer service is with uh, a foreign country. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to try to get your money back or try to get an exchange. And if you do, it takes a long time. So I wanted to pick somebody local. Okay. So obviously I reached out to the major players in the car play market. Uh, you know who they are. There's, there's two big ones out there. Um, I wanted to find the one that had the best reviews, of course. I wanted to find the one with the quickest customer service, meaning if I email them or call them, they pick up and they reply almost the same day, okay? And it helps if you can find them on Instagram or if you can follow, I don't know, them on Messenger and you can type something, something and they can reply right away, okay? And more importantly, they had to have a lot of content on YouTube and on the internet in order for me to gain some resources and information on how to do the fixes myself or how to install it myself. So who did I pick? You got it, a company called Beat Sonic. They are the candy store for your Lexus and Toyota trucks. Let's go ahead and open up this bad boy right here, CarPlay. Hmm, what's this? This product was put together using child slave labor from the slums of Uzbekistan. Enjoy and thank you for purchasing our product. For customer service, please contact us at beatmymeatsonic at aol.com. Oh, interesting. Okay. Hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. Whoa. My, my, my heart's beating fast. I've never been this so pissed off in my life. I'm, uh, I'm so mad I could beat my meat until it bleeds. I'm so fucking disgusted right now, guys. You know what? Stop the tape, honey. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. I, I'm, I'm just so pissed off right now. I, you know, as an influencer and a proud anti-lesbian transgender, I have an ethical and social responsibility and obligation to bring change to the world, especially to money greedy companies that want to use child, lab child labor to, to save pennies. To save pennies, guys. Come on. This is so disgusting, man. You know what? I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna call the clowns at B Sonic. What's their number here? Okay. Whew. Oh my god. I'm just flaming. My flaming. My left testicle right now is just popping with hives thinking about it. Hello, can I speak to the clown that is running Beat Sonic? 24 hours later. Hi. Oh. Hello. Hello. Hey. This is GX Bob here. Hey and GX I'm Bob, nice to finally meet you. I've been wanting to reach out to you and ask if there's any possible way we can use your vehicle at the next car show. We would like to showcase a black trim carbon fiber body kit and after the show you can actually keep the body kit. How does that sound? Oh. Um, hang on. 
Um, let me call you back later, okay? I'm shooting a YouTube video right now, and um, I'm very interested in your offer. Let me give you a call back really quick. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, folks. Let's move on with this installation. All right. Times are good. And you know what they say about uh, buying products uh, using child slave labor. It's not my kid. Right, let's move on guys. Woo! Let's continue unboxing this bad boy. Oh yeah. We got like a little care package here, some stickers. Cool. We got instructions. Eh, I don't think we're gonna need instructions, right? Let's put that aside. Let's take a look at all these pieces and components that came with the box. And I'm going to separate all this and we are going to label them. So at least when I try to explain it to you and do the install, you're going to know which piece I am using. Okay. So the complete box comes with nine items. We are going to label all nine items. So you know which one I grabbed off the table to take to the car in order to install it. Okay. So here's nine items. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We are going to call this the main harness. The main harness is the largest bundle that comes in the box. We are going to call this the small harness. So there's only two harnesses, okay? Big and small. Here are the modules. I know on, online they're going to call them interfaces and modules and all those, all those uh, technical terms. I am just going to call this the blue box. It has blue sides to it. So when I install this, I'm going to refer it to the blue box. I am going to refer this to the box with the green plugs. Obviously it has green plugs to it. I'm going to refer this waffle looking thing popsicle stick looking thing as the antenna. Obviously this is your HDMI cable. These two plugs right here look identical but one is a male and one is a female. Okay so I'm going to call this the blue and green cables. And right here, I believe this is the interface that goes to your cell phone. It has a USB female and a USB male, okay? Very simple, only nine components right here. So let's go ahead and tear our car apart. First things first, you're gonna take these side panels right here on the side and you're just gonna pop it out with your fingers. It just comes right out very easily. You're going to do the same for the driver's side. Just pop them out with your fingers. While we are still on the passenger side, we can go ahead and start removing these panels off also. Comes right out. Be careful down here. Use both hands. Now you're going to remove this panel. All you have to do is use your thumbs and push it out very carefully and you could just leave it right here. You, know, you don't need to remove it. Now there's a plastic trim right above here. All you have to do is just take your fingers and just start snapping it off. It comes right out. Now we're going to remove our shift knob. You take both hands and you push down on this boot. There's a clip right here. Just push down until it detaches off from the shift knob. Your boot comes right off. Now you take your shift knob and you turn it counterclockwise until it comes right off. Now we're gonna remove this center console trim. All you have to do is just grab your fingers. You guys could use a plastic trim tool if you want to, but I found out that everything comes off just using your fingers, believe it or not. So I'm gonna dig my fingers underneath here and just pop it up. Just like that. And under here, there's a little button to the left of your shift knob that if you press down on it, you can actually move it out of gear. I'm gonna show you that button closer once I remove this, okay? So once this comes up, pull this whole entire tray towards you. It comes right off. Pulls right up. 
Now if I lift up my center console right here, you're going to see the plugs I'm talking about. Disconnect three white plugs. You're going to have a white small plug and a gray small plug over here. Disconnect those. For a total of five plugs that you need to disconnect. Let's go ahead and remove it. Remember that button I was telling you about in order to move this out of gear? It's right here. Next, let's go ahead and dig our fingers underneath here and pull this trim off. You could leave it hanging or you could disconnect it. I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect it just to get it out of the way and I'm gonna place it on top of my dashboard. Next, we are gonna remove a total of four 10 millimeter fasteners. There's one on each side of the Navi screen and one on each side of the radio. They're gonna look like this. One right there and one right there. Same thing on this side, but the steering wheel doesn't give really good view of it but it is right also right there and one right there let's go ahead and remove them some areas are a little tighter than others so I can't use a drill motor I'm gonna go ahead and use a 2 inch extension on a 10 millimeter ratchet now we're going to pull off this bottom trim below your radio once you do that it's going to expose two additional 10 millimeter fasteners that you need to remove once you remove them put it into your cup holder this next portion you're going to want to lay a couple of clean rags over your shift knob and down up here because you're going to lay your radio on it in order to disconnect the plugs in back of it once you lay your rags down, go ahead and grab both hands on both sides and go ahead and pull towards you. Comes off very, very easily. Remember not to scratch any of your trims. From here, you're gonna to have to disconnect all the plugs behind your radio. The best thing to do is unplug everything first except the largest plug because the largest plug behind the radio has a special disconnect. You're going to have to take some kind of flat little tiny flathead like a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver and stick it inside this gray capsule right here. Once you stick inside this gray capsule right here, you are able to take both fingers, push on the sides and lift up lift up and this whole thing just comes right out once it comes right out the whole plug becomes disconnected now that we have removed the radio and set it aside we're going to take both hands and we are going to put it behind the sides of the navigation screen and we're going to pull towards us once we pull it towards us we can go ahead and set it down right here remember what the rags are for so it doesn't scratch up your trim panels anywhere set it down so you can take a look behind here in order for you to dis disconnect all the plugs behind here. Let's go ahead and start disconnecting the plugs behind the Navi screen. I got one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. The next step is to map out your installation. I like to install everything outside of the vehicle on my workbench before finalizing the permanent installation in the vehicle. So here I'm mimicking the location of all the components I have to work with starting with the navigation system on top and the radio on the bottom. So my one general rule of thumb is to try to keep your aftermarket components centralized as much as possible in order to make sure all your wires are not overly extended when they don't need to be. We also have to make sure that the CarPlay unit has enough clearance in the area that you choose to install it in. So if we take a look behind the radio, we know we are going to have an issue with clearance because the depth of the radio. If we take a look behind the navigation unit, we see that we have plenty of space right here. 
Let's go to the vehicle with our car plate to see what we have to work with. Right here, we have everything torn apart. And we're going to notice the area behind the navigation unit right here has plenty of depth. The cavity right here is huge. So let's go ahead and fit our car plate units behind there and see how we're going to face the whole entire system. So just by looking at the depth and the height and the width of these components, if I put them side by side, I'm going to have issues because we have beams on the left, we have beams on the right, uh, but we have plenty of depth. So it only makes sense for us to stack this on top of each other. How we're going to stack it, we don't know yet, but we're going to have to make sure all these plugs are facing the proper direction in order for them not to be damaged. So let's go ahead and stack this on top of each other and let's put it behind here, behind the center plastic beam right here that separates your navigation and your radio. So if I was to place it behind here, as you can see, it is a perfect fit. Now I can choose to face it up, down, sideways, backwards. This is where we're going to have to determine by installing our, all of our wires and cables on the workbench first before we bring it to the vehicle. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and go to the workbench right now and let's do the whole entire complete setup to see where all the wires are facing. Okay, since we decided the CarPlay would sit behind the navigation system nicely, we can go ahead and run our wires. We're going to run our wires in advance in order to map out the cleanest route and the best directions to have these two components attached together. Okay, so let's flip over our navigation unit to expose the plugs. Let's flip over our radio to also expose the plugs. And right here, Our car play unit we know is going to sit on top of each other but I also like to have the wire diagram that's included on one of your boxes right here facing towards me so that I can have an easier installation. I usually take the cable or plug that is the most rigid to install first. That will be the cable or plug we need to accommodate in order to not put it in an awkward position. Okay so here's the HDMI cable. Let's go ahead and plug it into HDMI port of this blue box. We're going to install the other side of the HDMI cable to the HDMI port of the green plug box. Now if we were to put this piggybacking each other, how would we route this in order for these cables not to be entangled? I'm thinking maybe I can twirl it one more time. There you go. <clears throat> and I'm also thinking maybe I can keep the HDMI cables both facing the same direction. So let's keep that there for now. Now I'm going to take our small wire harness and I'm going to plug the female side of it to the male side of behind the radio. The other end of it is going to go to the car side of that plug. So we're going to leave this dangling. Now you're going to take this plug right here that came with that small cable and we are going to plug it in to the blue box where it says line out. Next we're going to grab the pair of the green blue plugs that came with the kit. We're going to take the round end of it. The round end is actually green and we're going to plug it in to the green plugs down here. Let's go ahead and do that. Now if you take a look at both of your green plugs, there is an external one and there's an internal one. You're going to grab the internal one 
grab the other end of the internal one and plug it into the blue port behind your navigation screen. Grab the external one and route it alongside of the cable that you just routed to your navigation screen and keep these together. What I would do at this point is zip tie them together because they're going to go to the same location. Just this part of it right here is going to go to the car side of your navigation screen. I'm going to go ahead and zip tie them right now. This will make for a very, very clean look. Next, we are going to grab our main harness, the biggest harness you have inside your kit. We are going to take the female side, the one with this gray locking mechanism, and we're going to plug it behind your radio. The male side is going to go to the car side of your radio. We're going to leave that dangling loose. Next, out of the main harness, you're going to want to grab the cable with the red and the black wires. Take this little white port right here and we are going to route it to your blue box down here. The one with the instructions diagram. On the blue box, you're going to find out that right next to your HDMI cable, you're going to have that white port. You're going to plug this red and black wire into that white port. Next, also on the main harness, you're going to have the second largest plug that we're going to route to the green plug box. Also on your main harness, you're going to have this RCA looking plug. We're going to route this to your blue box. On your blue box, on the back diagram, it's going to be labeled mic in. You're going to take this RCA plug and plug it into the mic in port. As you can see, we completely ran all of our wires already and you see how everything is flowing and running in parallel. This is the kind of setup that we want. So now that we're done setting it up the way that we want to, we can go ahead and zip tie these wires together in order to create one harness instead of it being a spaghetti chart behind your navigation screen, okay? So let's go ahead and remember the direction of this top unit and this bottom unit on how it's going to sit. We are going to most likely double side this, double side tape it together. We are going to zip tie these HDMI cables and we are going to take this bundle right here and zip tie them together to create a clean look. Let's go ahead and grab some 3M double sided tape. Next step, I want to zip tie my HDMI cable the way I want it, neatly wound up just like this. I don't want to zip tie it too close to the plug itself because I want to have some kind of slack in order to install it later. There you go. Now since we have another identical plug just like this running on the other side of this blue box, I would like to zip tie this plug to this wire harness in order not to mix up this plug with the other plug later on when I disconnect and reconnect. So I'm going to zip tie these two together to make sure that they get routed to the same box as a pair. This is what we call the partner system in the electrical industry. Give it a lot of slack and just go down this harness and zip tie them together. 
As you start going down this wire harness, you're going to find out what works and what doesn't work. So we're going to take this harness right here, we're going to zip tie it to this plug, and we're going to zip tie it to this power line, the red and black line. Make sure you give it a lot of slack in order to have some play and wire it up later without any pulling on the wires to make them work. Right now you're going to follow this small wire harness and you're going to attach it to the other plug on the other side of this blue box and you're going to attach it to the red and the black wire also on this blue box. We are going to start creating a parallel diagram with these harnesses. I'm going to give it a lot of slack in order to install it later. I don't want to pull on these wires later just to make it fit because you never know once we put it on the vehicle we might have to route it around certain things and we don't know yet but right now let's go ahead and just clean up the wires and make these run in parallel with each other keep these wires together you're gonna thank me later because once we bring all of this to the car everything's gonna make sense because everything is ran together with the plug that it's supposed to Finally, the last two cables that comes with our kit. The Beat Sonic CarPlay system gives you the best of both worlds. Being able to hardwire your CarPlay directly to your phone or being able to use it wirelessly. I'm going to actually install both options because I like to know I can use one option if the other option is not connecting for some reason. Here is the antenna for the wireless system. We are going to plug this side, looks like a coax cable, to our CarPlay system. Here is the extension for the USB for hardwiring to your phone. This wire must be routed somewhere accessible to the driver, preferably on the left side of the steering wheel. In the event your girlfriend wants to reach over to plug in her phone, you can shove her head down and knock out two birds with one stone. USB directly to your phone. There you go. Luckily, both cables are going to be on the same side of this blue box. We're going to take the USB extender right here. I'm going to put it in the port that says USB wired. I'm going to take the wireless antenna, the coax side, and I'm going to plug it into this coax where it's labeled antenna. Now since I don't have a problem with the USB extender and the wireless antenna running together in parallel, I'm going to go ahead and either zip tie these or better yet, I'm just going to French braid them so they stay together because it really doesn't really matter where you're going to put this antenna as long as it picks up your cell phone and this is going to be inside your driver's cabin or inside your passenger cabin it doesn't really matter I just need it to be a clean place to run all of your wires so I'm going to take this plug right here where I normally hook up my iPhone and I'm going to have this in close proximity to it somewhere along the side pillars or I don't know somewhere in the center console all I know is I'm going to tuck this and hide it somewhere and it's not really important where. So I'm going to go ahead and French braid this, keep it together. The good thing about French braiding this is uh, you don't have to cut any zip ties if you uh, decide to change your mind on the location of this. So now it's all together and I'm just going to leave this on the table and let's go ahead and zoom out on the camera and show you the entire map diagram of the wiring. There you go folks. Most of you open up a box for the first time and see a huge box of intimidation with thousands of wires all over the place. But if you take the time to lay out everything on a workbench, you'll see that it's not that difficult and you'll cut your installation time in half. Oh, speaking of which, speaking of difficult and, uh, and, and a complete waste of my fucking time, I got this two minute story I gotta tell you be before we move on because it's just been bugging the shit out of me. 
I recently hired an aerospace engineer to come work on my team and and I swear to you I swear up and down this guy's resume was impeccable he was like the smartest guy on the planet okay he passed the first interview he passed the second interview he passed the third interview with flying colors his background check came up spotless he doesn't drink he doesn't smoke and he wanted to save his virginity until he got married and the guy's like 28 years old okay so so fast forwarded a week later I visited his cubicle to discuss his p poor performance um, he just wasn't cutting it he was the weakest link on our team and I discovered while talking to him he was missing three fingers missing three fingers come on guys the work that we do 90% of it is designing shit on a computer using a keyboard so you're doing this all day long and he's missing three fingers how the fuck did I miss that on the interview maybe because he was he had his hands in his pocket the whole entire time and trying to wine and dine me with his I want to save my virginity until I uh, get married uh, blah 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 and I totally missed it and that kind of taunted me that it, it traumatized me for all the interviews that followed because now instead of listening to the content of their character I'm staring at people's hands to see if they're missing fingers well anyways let's get back let's get back to the video enough about me let's do this guys bam 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 let's do it now that we mapped everything out we're going to disconnect everything except all the plugs on our carplay itself okay so we're going to disconnect all of the plugs on the navigation unit we're going to disconnect all the plugs off of the radio but we are going to leave it in the same formation all we're going to do is unplug and take away the radio and take away the navigation system okay so let's go ahead and start doing that Plan of attack, we are going to route the wireless antenna and the USB extender in first. Then we are going to route the main harness in towards the radio. Then we are going to fit our CarPlay unit behind the navigation system. Then we are going to plug in the blue connectors. After we plug in the blue connectors, we are going to go back and we are going to plug in the main harness in back of the radio did you guys get that so folks what i really love to do is i want to get a clean installation i want everything i don't need to be out of the way okay so in this initial installation where i'm going to bring i'm going to put in the wire harness from the carplay i need all of my oem wires out of the way so i don't get things all confused and all mixed up so here right here is the wires that go behind the navigation unit what i'm going to do is i'm going to get a zip tie and i am going to move it out of the way keep it out of the way until we need to install all of this later on okay there you go out of the way here is the harness that goes behind the radio I don't need a dangly in the middle right here where it's going to be in the way I'm going to move it out of the way and I'm going to zip tie it Folks, look at the clear path I just created for myself in order to start my installation of the CarPlay. Okay folks, this is how I laid everything out. I put the CarPlay unit on my passenger seat and I laid the main harness and the wireless antenna towards the driver's side because this harness right here, this bundle right here is the first thing that's going to go inside behind the navigation unit and behind the radio okay so we're going to have to route this first that is why i routed this to this side over here the blue connectors the blue connector cables is going to go in last because this is going to go with the carplay unit when we install it remember we're going to install the carplay unit once we route the big hunt, big bundle okay so let's leave this last we're going to leave it on the passenger side and just let it flow right down there okay so let's get started guys I'm going to grab the wireless antenna 
and the USB extension right here, the one that you're going to hook up to your iPhone or your Samsung Galaxy, and we're going to route it first. We are going to route it behind this very top beam right here. This is right behind at the lower portion of your navigation screen. We're going to poke it in here, and we're going to drop it behind the radio, and we're going to drop it behind the beam that's right underneath your radio right here, and we're going to route it towards your center console right here, your center console because it is going to go to the left side of your shift knob. We're going to put it into that cavity, okay? We are going to take the rest of the harness, this main harness right here, we are also going to route it behind the top beam that's right underneath your navigation system. We're going to route it all underneath here. But we are not going to route it to the center console with the antenna. We are going to go right here, right behind the radio, this cavity right here, and leave it right there for our later installation, okay? Now we are going to take our CarPlay unit, and while we're moving it towards the navigation cavity, we are going to pull on the main bundle right here until it slides all the way down. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Remember, make sure there's no entanglement. Make sure there's no crimps. Okay? You do that by pulling on the antenna. You do that by pulling on the USB extension. Keep pulling so there's no more slack. You do not want slack anymore. Okay, guys? All right? This USB connector, I mean this blue connector right here, you can leave it dangling. This goes in last, so don't worry about it. Right now, you're going to want to make sure all your plugs are plugged in. Don't leave anything loose, just like this plug right here. It just came right off. Make sure everything is connected before you install this CarPlay unit. Ooh, that would have been a nightmare, huh? Make sure everything's connected, everything's clicked in, all the RCAs are clicked in. Your coax cable, the one that goes to the wireless antenna, make sure that, that is twisted on tight. Make sure all your HDMI is in. Make sure your power cable is in right here. Um, more importantly, make sure all your RCA plugs are in, and Beatsonic also mentioned your dip switches number one should be in the down position. The dip switches number one should be in the down position, okay? So here's the tricky part, guys. You are going to have to navigate your whole entire CarPlay unit into this fitment right here, into this cavity, and slide it down so it stays behind this black plastic beam common to this this steel pipe right here okay so it's got to be between here trust me it's going to fit right behind there really snug so you don't even have to zip tie it or anything it's going to stay okay so here we go what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my hdmi cable it's going to face the driver's side the blue connectors right here they're going to face the passenger side but i'm going to throw in the hdmi cables first okay throw it in you're going to have to weasel it in there very carefully. Let me zoom in quick for you guys. Make sure when you're doing all this, your HDMI cable or any of the plugs don't come loose on you. See that? Just keep pulling on the main harness, pull on the antenna. Make sure this side is okay. There you go. Looking good, looking good. Bingo. It falls right behind here. Nicely. Make sure no wires are pinched. Very important. Double check, make sure nothing is unplugged as it goes in. And there you go, bingo. At this point, it's okay to go ahead and cut the zip ties that were holding your OEM harnesses. It's time to install, folks. Let it drop. Okay. So we know Behind the navigation unit, we're going to have four OEM plugs and we're going to have to plug two blue connectors, okay? One's going to go to the navigation screen and one's going to go to the car side. We're going to have to look right here on your OEM one. It already has a blue plug, so it's a male connector. We're going to look for the female side of our car play. We're going to plug it in until it clicks. Oops. There you go. It clicks. Now this side right here, which is the male connector, is going to go into the female connector of the navigation screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. 
I'm going to take my navigation screen right here. We're going to put it on top of my yellow rags. We're going to plug in this blue connector to the female side over here. We are going to plug in the rest of the plugs. OEM plugs right here. Black plug right here. Now we're going to take our blue connector cable. Remember it's pretty long. We are going to wind it up and stick it behind here. And while we do that, we are going to bring up our navigation unit. While we're bringing up our navigation unit, we're going to have to keep putting our connector in there, our cables in there, making sure nothing gets crimped. Nothing's going to get pinched. Very important, guys. Okay, so keep moving and keep putting your arms in here and route the wires. Keep around the wires with your fingers here. Bring it up. And there you go. Make sure you just push in lightly because if there's an obstruction in the back of there, you don't want to force it. It might be a cable or a plug and you will break it. Okay, there you go. Next step, we're going to do the radio. Okay, folks, here is the wireless antenna and the USB connector okay so the antenna is not very important I could just take double-sided tape sticker right here and I just could tape alongside the plastic panel of my center console right here it doesn't matter or I could just leave it sitting in there somewhere I'm just gonna leave it sitting in there no big deal as long as it's in close proximity of my cell phone it's off of Bluetooth so it's just gonna be over there. I'm gonna keep it away from any metal objects and just keep it laying on top of the carpet itself. This USB connector right here, you can place this anywhere you want. It just has to be accessible to you so you can plug in your, your Apple or your Samsung cell phone, okay? Or you could just use the wireless portion of the CarPlay. It doesn't matter. I normally like to use a hard line just in case because your Bluetooth sometimes is not very reliable, the connectivity. So um, in my case, I don't know about you but I am going to most likely route this to the left side of the steering wheel where my cell phone holder might be on another car or just somewhere close to your cell phone holder okay but there are a lot of advantages for putting this far 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 away from your passenger and this is why honey we're always listening to your playlist can we listen to mine Oh yeah, babe. The USB adapter is on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. You're going to have to move your head across my lap to get to there and reach it. I, I can't help you because I'm, I'm driving right now. Oh yeah, babe. It's a little further to your left. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you got it. It's almost there. It's almost there. Take your time. Take your time. Oh, good Lord. Mother of all living creatures, big and small. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh. This is the real reason why God made women. Good Lord. Yeah, it's almost there. You're getting it. Take your time. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm. Oh. <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and do our radio portion. Let's go ahead and move our big harness out of the way here. I'm going to move it to the left side. I'm going to take our OEM harnesses and move it to the right side. Okay. We're going to lay everything right here. Take our radio and just lay it right down here. Woo! There we go. So we are going to take our main harness. We're going to take the male connector of our main harness and we're going to go ahead and plug it in. Click that sucker in and we're this is just going to be a puzzle right now we're just going to make every sure uh, we're just going to go ahead and install everything that fits into whatever okay so here's the small harness I believe it goes right here after we plugged everything yeah after we plugged everything up behind the radio 
we're going to take our wire harness from our car play and we are going to nicely bundle it up behind the radio and drop it inside one of these crevices right here okay make sure all these wires are out of the way go ahead and stick your arms behind here and just move everything out of the way and far back as much as possible before you stick in the radio okay put your hands behind here make sure there's no other plugs dangling make sure you got everything plugged in okay then you can go ahead and scoot your radio in Remember, we're looking for any obstructions. If you feel any obstructions, you want to get your hands back here and help it along. After all that is done, now I need to find a home for our USB extension. You can put it in this corner, slide it right underneath your radio trim, plastic trim right here, face it upward, and keep it facing upward just like this. Let me zoom in for you guys. Keep it facing upward like this. And now if you were to take your side panels right here and install it. It will look just like that. This, this would sit right against your radio panel right here. And you could route your iPhone or your Samsung phone to your cell phone holder all right guys as you can see we are all done and complete okay we put everything back to normal if you guys don't know how to put everything back to normal just look at the beginning of the video and just reverse engineer everything if you still need help after that i can actually call my little sister to go over to your house to help you out okay you little dumb shits right now everything's put back together as you can see right here we have our us be adapter for our cell phones remember where we placed it so all I have to do is put take my iPhone lightning cable right here and plug it in remember this also applies to you uh, Samsung users if you guys weren't fortunate enough to have money to buy iPhones and you guys decided to go with Samsung then I feel very sorry for you but for us rich folks we use iPhones right here all you have to do is just plug it into your USB port right here and the other end or your lightning cable right here goes into your iPhone. So normally when you start up the vehicle right at the point where you already finished installing your CarPlay, you're not going to get this screen, all right? You're going to get a blank black screen and then you're going to get a system loading message and all that. And that is just the initial setup. I already did all that before I even uh, shot this video just to make sure everything worked before I already produced this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. When you start your vehicle, most likely you're gonna be on the navigation screen. Okay, here it is. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get into my vehicle, start the vehicle. I am going to put my cell phone, my iPhone 18 Pro Max SP three terabyte cell phone right here that I paid $8,000 for. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my lightning cable to it. Remember the lightning cable? I'm going to, I'm going to hardwire it instead of doing the Bluetooth, okay? I love hardwiring stuff because I don't have to worry about Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and being disconnected. Everything is hardwired. So if there's a hard line, I'm going to use it. So let's go ahead and hook it up right here. Bam! If I hook it up, this is what's going to happen. It's not going to go to my CarPlay right away. CarPlay happens when I push navigation for a couple of seconds. There's a navigation button right here that sets everything off. I'm going to go ahead and hold navigation. Bam! CarPlay turns on right away. Did you guys see how quick that was? There was no delay. So let's go ahead and do it again. I'm going to click on audio. Here's my audio screen. I'm going to go ahead and click on navigation to turn on my CarPlay. Go ahead and do a countdown, okay? Bam! CarPlay turns on right away. No delay whatsoever. The reason why I love CarPlay so much is because I use my maps and my ways a lot, okay? If you notice, my iPhone is not even on, but it is mirroring my iPhone right now. So I don't even, I don't even need to turn on my iPhone. I can go ahead and go to ways, and I can go ahead and do all my setups right now, okay? So are you still heading to LAX Terminal 6? Are you still heading to uh, Spearmint Rhino? Are you still heading to Sapphire Las Vegas? I'm not going to show you that portion right now but all I can tell you right now is whatever I already 
program to my location last it's going to go ahead and show up right here as you can see Waze app works on my Lexus GX460 you're probably asking why the hell would you spend this kind of money on CarPlay when your Lexus GX460 already has navigation on there when was the last time you guys used the Lexus navigation system it fucking sucks it sucks so bad that I have to actually use my cell phone to get around Los Angeles okay guys now that I have Apple CarPlay I can actually use the apps on my Apple iPhone to mirror everything on my navigation screen so I can use everything that is on Apple right now so if you look at the lower left corner right here it's gonna have all my apps okay look at this okay everything's on here dual screen right there even tells me on the calendar Thursday May 4th I'm supposed to pick up the kids blah 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 I don't know the extent of CarPlay right now. I'm going to go ahead and mess with it some more, but at least you guys got the gist of it, okay? So let's just say I don't want to hardwire it and I want to Bluetooth it, okay? So Bluetoothing your CarPlay to your iPhone system is exactly the same way you would Bluetooth any other device. So let's go ahead and set that up. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. Okay, guys, if you guys want to go ahead and set up uh, Bluetooth to your CarPlay without using a hard line just like this you're gonna go ahead and start your vehicle right from the get-go your cell phone and your CarPlay is not connected together we're gonna start from scratch okay we're gonna go ahead and turn on our engine once we turn on our engine we're gonna go ahead and start the infotainment system we're gonna hold the navigation screen for two seconds until we get this screen when we get this screen, we know it's not paired to our cell phone yet because if I push Apple CarPlay right here, nothing happens. What we're going to do is we're going to click on settings. Once we're going to click on settings, we're going to go ahead and look at what we're going to do is look at the Bluetooth name on here. My Bluetooth name for my system is NV17W-BT-AE, go fuck yourself, okay? NV17W-BT-AE, go fuck yourself. Remember that number. Once you remember that number, you're going to go back to your cell phone up here. You're going to go ahead and turn on your cell phone. You're going to stare at your wallpaper of your hot chick for a little minute. And then you're going to go ahead and turn on your Bluetooth and look for that Bluetooth name, okay? Let's go ahead and turn on our Bluetooth right here. When we turn on the Bluetooth, we are going to look for NV17W-BT-AE, go fuck yourself, and it is right here, and it says not connected. So let's go ahead and connect our iPhone to our CarPlay system. Now, once it says connected, it says connected right here. We can go ahead and access the screen. Now that it's connected, if we get out right here, it's going to say CarPlay. It's already connected. Our Bluetooth is already paired up. Let me go ahead and zoom back out. I'm going to show you. Bam! Our navigation screen is already on CarPlay automatically through you, uh, Bluetooth. So Bluetooth should connect automatically even if we turn off our engines and we leave the car. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you right here the swiping. I normally use Waze on here. I use WhatsApp. Okay, sometimes I use Google Map. And down here, you're going to have a dual screen. You're going to go ahead and figure all this out through YouTube or any other resources that teaches you about CarPlay. Right now, I'm just showing you guys how to pair the system and how to install the system, okay? So we know it's successful right now. And just to ensure that it's successful, we're going to go ahead and turn off our engine. We're going to go ahead and turn on our, on our engine again. And let's see what happens. Once we turn on our engine, we're going to get our Lexus logo right here, Lexus Inform. Let's see what we need to do to get back to CarPlay. Remember, I'm not even hardwiring this right now. Everything is through Bluetooth. You got your continue button right here. Let's go ahead and click continue. So it's going to go automatically to your navigation screen, okay? So I'm going to hit navigation for a couple of seconds. Let's push navigation. Once I push navigation, it goes straight into your CarPlay. 
there is no disconnect between your cell phone and the navigation system the minute that you already set it to Bluetooth. It's going to be like that forever, okay, unless you disconnect the battery, obviously. So let's go ahead and go to the apps. Right there, I just proved it to you. CarPlay is completely working. All right. There you guys have it, a Beatsonic CarPlay system in a 2014 and up Lexus GX460. I'm sure Beatsonic also said that it fits in a Toyota. Uh, I don't give a shit because I don't do Toyotas. I only do Lexus GX460s and that's why you guys are following me, right? Everything is for a Lexus GX460. So I am very grateful for you guys watching my video because I will always find an easier way to do the installation I will find a better methodology to do the system I will weed out all the speed bumps so you guys don't have to incur those hardships when you do the installation on the videos if you guys ever find a better way go ahead and share it with me I may one day redo the video revisit it and revise it and make it better but I have spent many 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 hours writing this video down and creating a map in order for you guys to have the easiest route to install your CarPlay system on the GX460. And if you notice, I try my best not to skip any steps, okay? Even if it requires removing one bolt, I am going to record me removing that one damn bolt. I do not skip steps, okay guys? So, thank you, thank you, Beat Sonic for entrusting me with your product. I installed it. This video is not really a product review because I just installed it. I don't know nothing about it. All I know is I've driven it for a week and a half and I love it, okay? So if you guys want to buy the Beatsonic CarPlay system, go ahead and go on their website. They're on Instagram, they're on the website, they're, 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 they're on Messenger. Reach out to Eric. Go, go find out all about them. They are local. They're not from China where you have to deal with international sales and refunds and issues and customer service. B-Sonic is local in Southern California. So that's why I like to dabble with products that are local to me. So if I ever come across any issues or problems, they're just a phone call and a drive away for me to go visit them. And if you ever want B-Sonic to actually install the CarPlay system for you, they have a technician in-house. If you have been watching the Sonic's YouTube videos, they actually have an installation bay that actually installs all their systems that they sell online. So luckily for me, and luckily for you, you guys can actually do it yourself without any intimidation, right? So go ahead, buy your Beatsonic CarPlay system and take it from me. It is not that hard to do, guys. Peace, peace, bam! The red square is on, that means it's filming, so you can start anytime you want, okay. and we'll just cut it. Okay. What's my line again? Honey, we're always listening to your music. Can we use my playlist instead? Okay. All right. Yeah, fix your hair, yeah. Look there. <laughs> yeah, start over. You start over. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, what you see is going to be in the film right here, okay? Okay. Honey, we're always listening to your music. Can we listen to mine? Uh, okay. Okay, so, all right. Let's, so, let's take it from the beginning again for the 20th time. Let's pretend you actually want this part. I need more feelings. I need more pizzazz. I need you to... I want this job. I want this job. Okay. I want this job. There are 85 girls in line right now wanting this job. You need to sell it to me. Okay. So let's take it from the beginning again. Shoot. Honey, we're always listening to your playlist. Can we listen to mine? Okay. Okay. Um, you know what? Yeah. So, uh, you ever thought about choosing a different career path? Like maybe, I don't know, doing nails or something? Yeah. You know what? Next. Next. I don't got time for this shit, man. Next. Hey, honey. We're always listening to your playlist. Can we listen to my iPhone instead? Holy shitballs. That, that, that was perfect. 
you, you are a natural born actress. You are going to go places in this industry. I know the producer and the director of the GX Bob channel, and I'll let them know you got the part. I want you in this part. Okay? So all we have to do right now is just one little more tiny, tiny, tiny test that you have to pass. In this industry, we like to call it the casting couch. It's it's really super simple. It's super simple. I'm just going to sit there and, and, and I'll give you... There, there's no lines. There's there's no lines to this next test. Um, we're just gonna have you perform something to see if you're a good fit for this part right here. So um, uh, yeah. So just go inside my office. Um, take off all your clothes and just wait for me. And uh, oh, it's it's standard procedure. Don't worry about it. It's there's there's it's it's all legit. All legit. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you got the job. Everybody else, we're done. We're done with the casting. Let's get the fuck out of here.